Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. This year we are celebrating the 10th anniversary of your favorite TV show. Once again, we have traveled all over East Africa to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need. So they can adapt and make their farms more productive even while the climate changes. We support them to become more productive, get better yields, and increase their income. We meet families and enter their kitchens to explore what we eat, where we get it, and how we can cook it in cleaner, faster, healthier, and cheaper ways. And at the same time, increase family nutrition. We will see how farmers from across the region can benefit from our experts' advice while also learn from each other in so many ways. Join us on these journeys and share in the farmers' experiences as they shape up their shambas. Welcome to the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Dear viewers, we would like to let you know that all of the filming you're about to see was done before the outbreak of the coronavirus in Kenya and Tanzania. Farmers, these last few weeks have not been easy. What with the desert locusts destroying crops and you giving reports on how you cannot get to the markets on time because of COVID. That's why we've got some good news for you. We want to give you a boost into the new planting season by looking at how to plant potatoes. And to show you how to keep records so that you can manage your farm activities and make profits. So, we are going to take a look at the past years of Shamba Shape Up and see what we can learn. But first, let's see what's happening with the desert locust. Thanks to your reports, we managed to get rid of the desert locust in most of Kenya. However, in the last couple of weeks, we have seen the return of locust in some areas. Most locusts have been reported in Samburu. Some locusts have also been reported in Turkana. And a few locusts have been reported in Ikepia and West Pokot. We are seeing many new swarms of locusts forming. They are expected to move across the borders to Ethiopia, South Sudan, Sudan and Uganda. Do not make noise or try to scare locusts away. This will only break up the swamps and make it difficult to control them. Also, they might come back to your farm again. While you can usually eat locusts, do not eat them at the moment, as they might have been sprayed with chemicals. If you have only a few locusts, you can pick them up and drop them into soapy water to drown. Desert locusts are hungry creatures and they can eat their own body weight every day. They are able to completely destroy crops growing above the ground like maize or millet. However, they are not able to destroy crops growing underground. Therefore, why not plant fast-growing tubers such as potato or sweet potatoes? Let's see how. Let's start with the Irish potato. Not only will this crop be safe from locusts, it can also be grown several seasons a year and has a big market. When growing potatoes, choose an open position in full sun on fertile, wind-drained soil. Break up any large clods of earth. Don't plant where potatoes have already grown for two or more years in a row, as this will increase the risk of disease. Instead, rotate with a legume or a cereal. Remove all weeds and spread four tons of well-rotted manure per acre and dig it into your soil two weeks before planting. That's about 150 wheelbarrows. Mark out straight lines where you plan to grow the potatoes and dig trenches either side around 20 centimeters deep. This will trap water close to the roots. Once the trenches are dug, the seed potatoes can be placed on the ridge between the trenches. Using a stick to measure, place the potatoes on the ridge 30 centimeters apart and about 5 centimeters below the surface. Place the seed potatoes with the shoot facing upwards and cover with soil. Be sure to plant certified potato seeds. Get in touch with iShamba for more information on where to get your seeds. Great! That's the potatoes planted. All right, let's turn to Naomi. She's with Sami Agili, an expert on sweet potatoes. 
He is visiting Beatrice Nyeri and has some advice on how to improve our sweet potato farming. So Sammy, you've had a look at uh, Beatrice's sweet potatoes patch. You have something to tell us about a different kind of potato. Sure, I have something uh, to tell you. <laughs> yes. You can see from uh, my hands, we have uh, the local one, mm -hmm. which is cream, mm -hmm. and uh, the orange fleshed one, which is orange inside. Can you see the difference? Yes, mm -hmm. I'm seeing. We are trying to promote this one because of the nutritional benefit. Mm -hmm. It is rich in vitamin A that is required by the body. Mm -hmm. And vitamin A helps to boost the body defensive system. Mm -hmm. It is very, very important for children under five mm. and also pregnant mothers. And children like it very much. Yes. Really? Oh, yes, yes. Uh -huh. Very sweet. Mm. To give children a healthy boost, add mashed OFSP to their porridge. Remember also, you don't need much to give the child to meet his daily requirement. You, you normally eat too girly, right? Yes. yes. Do you use a spoon or use your fingers? Fingers. fingers. fingers now course. that size that uh -huh. you make with your fingers, uh -huh. when you want to scoop, uh -huh. it's more or less that size. So British here would love to know how to plant this orange flesh sweet potato. So how do you go about it? Well, I think the first step oh. is to make sure that uh, you have a good source of your planting material, uh, which must be deceased free. Where can I get the planting material? There are two sources. Mm. One, the Ministry of uh, Agriculture Extension staff. Mm. Now the other place is Kari Embu in this area. Mm. So now she has her planting materials. So how does she prepare the land and what exactly does she do? The first thing before you even start preparing the land, mm -hmm. you make sure that that land, the previous crop was not sweet potato. Uh, because if you plant the same, then uh, there are chances of build up of diseases in that field. So you need a field that was not previously planted or sweet potato. Uh, you plow your land, your land you, you do the harrowing, mm -hmm. and then you make your ridges, mm. which should be one meter apart. And then uh, you choose your planting material now. Remember, the recommended length of your planting material should be about 30 centimeters. Uh, this should have at least three nodes, uh, one, two, three, mm. where two nodes should go down on the ridge when you are planting, mm -hmm. and one node should be out of the ridge. Mm -hmm. And the distance between one plant and the other should be 30 centimeters. And so what is the importance of ridges? Um, the importance of ridges is to allow the storage roots to expand uniformly in the soil, mm -hmm. so that you have good sized roots that you harvest. Uh, do you need to use fertilizer? The beauty of sweet potato is it doesn't require uh, fertilization. Mm -hmm. But we encourage farmers to apply manure into their farms. When is the best time for planting? So you look and see when you normally receive your rains, mm -hmm. and then you prepare in advance. Mm -hmm. Your planting material should be ready, your land should be ready, mm -hmm. so that when rain falls, mm -hmm. you also do the what? The planting. planting. Mm -hmm. So you've had it, huh? Nicodemus yeah. and Beatrice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you, you spread the good news, yes. right? Yes, <laughs> yes. We are going to spread it. <laughs> so are we ready to plant? Yes. <laughs> With Sammy's advice, we got planting the orange flesh sweet potatoes using the ridge method. First, the land is cleared and is prepared by cleaning and smoothing out. And ridges one meter apart are made. We then select vines and cut them in three nodes. And at this point, even Granny was curious as to what was going on and came in to help. On top of the ridge, we plant the vines with two nodes in the soil and one out. The ridges ensure the plants have enough soil to produce many large roots. A job well done, and Beatrice was a happy farmer. Tony, I'm so relieved the locusts are getting under control. I may just plant some nutritious and delicious sweet potatoes in my kitchen garden next season. You should, Caro. Well, coming up after the break. We take a closer look at how the coronavirus has affected farmers and what to do about it and get some advice around how to keep records and organize farm finances in these critical times.
you are back on Shamba Shepa. Today we've looked at how to plant Irish potatoes and sweet potatoes. These tubers will stay unharmed in the face of locust attacks. But there's still room to learn more. Okay, so let's go and see what's on today's Shamba Shepa. Farmers are sending us many questions through Aishamba to know more about COVID-19 and how to cope even as they do their farming. Welcome to Q&A. Battling uncertain weather caused by climate change is a struggle, but it's a fight we must win by learning to be more efficient and productive. This week, we have Joseph Chege from Eka Africa to help us answer some of your questions. Now, Mutua has this question. Due to COVID-19 and the floods that occurred, farmers have suffered losses. Is there a way of stopping this from happening? Yeah, Tony, it is true. A combination of um, uh, COVID, the, the effects of uh, the pandemic, and uh, our farmers experiencing uh, agricultural risks like uh, flooding, uh, it's really a big challenge to the farming communities and uh, it's really affecting farmers and uh, they are not able actually to run their production activities. It's a high time now we uh, start sensitizing farmers to understand the importance of uh, embracing all the risk uh, mitigation measures like uh, insurance, agricultural insurance to list a few. Langat from Wasingishu is telling us that in the next growing season he may not be able to buy insurance just like most of you farmers out there. Now, Joseph, is there a solution for our farmers? We have micro-insurance products whereby we bundle uh, index insurance um, products with inputs. When a farmer is buying input um, like, like fertilizer or seed, it comes bundled with uh, insurance. So he pays as a bundled product and this makes it actually uh, an affordable uh, approach of, of purchasing insurance product. So, and it is, it is not very expensive because uh, uh, you only have to add like, uh, you know, like 20 or 30 shillings on top of a uh, retail price of a bag of seed. So, uh, we have such kind of arrangements, um, basically to make sure whatever farmers are investing in their farms, in terms of uh, cost of inputs, it's basically covered. And how easy is it to sign up for the insurance? Does a farmer have to go somewhere physically or can it be done digitally at home using the phone? So over time, we have managed to come up with digital platforms whereby um, f our farmers can actually access, especially with the index insurance products, on a digital platform, even using the, the normal feature phone uh, on a USSD platform. You just dial a USSD code, and then uh, backend will be able to get the details, production uh, details. Like for instance, uh, we will be able to get the location of your farm, we'll be able to get the details about the planting date, uh, the, inv the investment cost. For instance, if you, um, you want to ensure uh, the cost of production, we have commoditized uh, our insurance products whereby using a card, just like the way you load airtime, you can scratch, then uh, activate insurance um, at the farm level without necessarily uh, filling the proposal form. Well, you've heard that. It's not just about buying or getting insurance. Farmers must still follow good agricultural practice as well as conservation agriculture to help with climate change. If you'd like more information on links to markets, financial institutions, and even off-takers for contract farming, get in touch with iShamba. Shamba Shepa have traveled to Kisi County, where good climate keeps the land very green. But the farmers still have some problems. Agriculture in this region is a main economic activity. In the village of Engorwa in Keroka, we meet Moseti Rangondi and his son Gideon. They live on this two-acre farm with the extended family. One of the challenges Moseti faces is knowing whether he's making a profit or a loss on his farm. So, we are now going to review how to keep farm records so you can better manage the money you invest and the money you make on your shamba. Steven, a financial expert, is here to advise. What common mistakes do farmers make when it comes to keeping records? It's when they go to the shop, they buy the farming tools, and when they come back to their home, they don't record. 
they just put the receipt or they throw the receipt away and then they do the farming. At the end of the month, if they sell whatever they sell, they are not able to record anywhere. So they will never know whether they are making profit or loss. Mm -hmm. So we advise all the farmers, all the business people to keep record as their key mandate in every day. Gideon and Mosetti, do you keep records in your farm? Yes, yes. What type of records do you keep? There are records of tomatoes, garbage, and um, some passion fruits. Yes. So who keep the records? Uh, I do keep the records. Mm -hmm. uh, ah, so you're the accountant? Yes. <laughs> okay, good. Mr. Ambua, I've seen you going through the Shamba records. Mm -hmm. Do you have any comments on what you have seen or, or where they can improve? I've gone through the record, the farm record. And I can see there is a track of what happens in every month and in every day, which uh, it's a impressive record, but uh, it's only one record and sometimes it's kept in a piece of paper where it can get lost any time. So it's very important to have record and to buy a counter book where you'll be record, uh, putting all the details of your farm. And the records are important because uh, they help you uh, track the performance of your business and also they are very important because when you want to borrow money for the investment of your business you can use the record visit one of the banks around you give them the record they go through the record they see how many years you have been in business what you have been doing what profit you make from the business and through that you'll be able to borrow money from them and come and invest there are three kinds of records where you need to have. You can buy a query book or a counter book. And uh, the first page, you write uh, the cash book where you love the money coming in and the money going out. Uh, in uh, money coming in is where you sell. If you have your farm, you have your tomatoes and you sell your tomatoes. You write the date you sold and what you sold, the details of that, and then the amount. Then uh, whatever goes out, it's what you purchase. It may be on credit or on cash. By the end of the month or by the end of your, uh, your sales, if you do your sales, you are able to know exactly how much did you spend to invest in your business. And then from there, how much have you made as profit? And you'll be able to uh, look at them together and you see whether you are making any progress in your business. Uh, you also have the second book which we call the purchase book. The purchase books you record all the things you purchase on credit or on cash. So whatever you, you buy from outside for, the, to, for working on the business, any expense you do, it's good you record all the purchases in your purchase book. And then uh, the third book is the sales book where you also record whatever you sell, if you sell your tomatoes, if you sell your milk, you have to record that. And it has the date, the particulars is what you have sold, if it's in milk, is the particulars, and then the amount you have sold. By the end of the month, you'll be able to get the total of what you have made. You'll also get the total of what you have purchased, and you do the difference. Then you'll see whether you are making the progress of the business. Do you have any question for the expert? Which kind of book we can use in keeping our records? The three books are very important. They can be put in one counter book, so the cash book should be at the front. And then in between you can have the purchase, and then the back of your page you can have the sales record there. And you'll be able to carry that book when you are going even to your business, and you do all the recording after you do the sales. If you buy something from the shop, you come and do the recording. And you'll find by the end of the month, your business is progressing on well. So, once you've got a good overview of the finances on your shamba, you need to consider how to protect your crops and livestock from disasters such as drought, flood, or even theft. Let's look back at our visit to farmer David Mugwanja. He started dairy farming three years ago and wants to make sure this business will be a success. 
We've taken him to Simon Kironja, an experienced dairy farmer in Meru, to find out how insurance can help protect his cows from disasters. Mr. Mugwanja, yes. now we are here with our farmer, the chairman of Meru Dairy. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With so many members. More than 40,000. 40,000 members? Yes. Well done, well done. <laughs> so now, Mr. Mugwanja, you are also a farmer. Yes, I am. And you have cows. I have. How many now? I have five dairy cows. Mm -hmm. Yes. So any particular incident that you can, that brings back some memories for you about your cows? So I, have, I have been keeping these cows for the last three and a half years. Mm -hmm. And uh, the worst incident that happened was that I lost one of my cows. And uh, that was a drawback. Mm -hmm. As a beginner, it was very sad. Yes. Yeah. You've heard about Mr. Mugwanja. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yeah. comment, And you've got some very healthy, beautiful, smiling cows. Yes. I'm sure with these healthy looking cows, you wouldn't want to lose one, would you? No, no, please. I can't be happy when I lose one. Uh -huh. yes. So what have you done about it? Uh, seven years back, I lost a cow. But uh, I, well, I want to know how I can be replaced this cow. Uh -huh. But also, there's nobody who can replace you unless you do uh, an insurance. You insure all your cows. So you oh. decided to insure Yes, them. that's why I decided to insure my cows. And most of them are now insured. What do you think of uh, cow insurance right now? I, well, I think it's something that I really need to think seriously about because uh, mine, when it died, I just buried it. Mm -hmm. No one paid me anything. Mm -hmm. I lost it. And you know what? You're in luck because now we have an expert who yes. is going to tell us more uh -huh. about car insurance. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, Joseph, for coming in. Mr. Mugwanja here is very interested in, uh, in, in uh, insurance cover for yes. his cows. Please tell me more about your farm. Uh, well, my farm is in Nyandarwa, a place called Magumu. I have uh, five cows. Mm -hmm. And uh, about a year ago, I lost one cow. Too bad. Uh, during your interaction with uh, Mr. Kiruja, yes. he explained to you about insurance because he has that experience. Well, he has the experience, but I actually wanted to hear it from the horse's mouth. What is insured under uh, dairy insurance is what we call uncontrollable diseases. That is beyond your control. Uh, there are the risks that are insured like accidents. Okay. Unfortunately, your animal can have an accident mm -hmm. still within the farm. Yes. And it inflicts injuries probably internally or externally. Yeah. That still is insured mm -hmm. because that animal can eventually die, for okay. instance. Your animal can also inflict injuries. It's very common. Animals feeding on metallic materials like oh. nails. Oh, yes. And your animal can inflict injuries internally. If eventually, that animal is going to die. Okay. That's still insured. Another risk that is very common, I don't know whether that is, uh, that is common in your area. Yes. We have theft. Theft. It yes. is quite common. If yeah. it is common, then it it's still common. covered. So, uh -huh. if he is to insure his cows right away, what steps does he take? And what yeah. steps do you as insurance or the insurance company take? Uh -huh. You will fill the proposal form. But first of all, you look for a, um, a branch of an insurance company or you can use an agent. Okay. You just apply the proposal form. Uh -huh. That's like a declaration. You're saying I have this number of animals yes. and this is the declared value per animal. Yes. So that's a declaration. Then the other bit of certifying these animals for insurance mm -hmm. is done by a registered vet, the vet oh. doctor. Okay. So once you submit these two forms, they are going to give you a quotation. You pay premium for that. That's yes. like the cost of buying this insurance okay. uh, solution. Mm. And then once you pay the premiums, then you, you're covered for one year. Many a times we see farmers not uh, feeling... Um, uh, feeling uh, comfortable buying this insurance solution because they're not too sure what is going to happen. Am I going to be compensated? Mm -hmm. How long is it going to take for me to get compensation? Mm -hmm. But it's important to consult experts or even talk to farmers who have benefited from this and they are going to guide you through the process. They are going to refer you to the relevant people. Just like what we in Shamba Up have done, we brought our farmer to see our farmer yes. who's insured his cows mm -hmm. and also brought an expert here. And if you want more information about insurance, you can get in touch with us using our iShamba call center. Wow. I must say I'm quite impressed, Tony. I didn't know it was that simple to keep a record. I think I might just try it at home. You know, Carol, all this talk about sweet potatoes is making me really hungry. <laughs> hey, do you remember when you ate those nice chapatis made from orange fresh sweet potatoes? <laughs> mm. Tony cannot just give up. Anyway, farmers, keep safe, keep well, and we'll see you on the next Shamba.